Hey everyone, Bronco here. Got the 76 GL1000 motor on the bench. Had some discussion about doing the timing belts and how all that's done. And I wanted to make a video to show you guys that it's not that hard. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take the covers off. There's four bolts on each side here, two bolts on the front. We're gonna loosen that stuff up. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull these covers off. You need a 10 millimeter socket to do that. What I do once I've gotten these all broken loose, I go around with my socket wrench and I break them all loose. And then I just take the socket uh, extension and I put the 10 millimeter socket on my drill and then I can go around and run all these out. Take this cover off. And this is what you get when you take all of the covers off got the camshafts and the rockers and uh, here are the pulleys and then you've got your belt tensioners here and then the spray and I'll show you guys how to do that that side so after you get all that off then you want to go over here to the back side you want to take this timing cover off and we're gonna set the motor on top dead center special tool that I made to be able to take that out got tired of boogering these things all up with a regular regular uh, screwdriver okay so you can see down inside there we've got that timing mark that T lined up with the notches right here on the case and then there's a number one right there inside there and uh, so we are indeed already on top dead center on here um, if you weren't on top dead center uh, I have a kickstarter on here so I use the kickstart to turn it or you can just put uh, a, a 14 millimeter socket on the uh, on the crank bolt on the front here and turn it around to uh, top dead center okay so when we've got the motor on top dead center you want to look at each one of the pulleys and you see right here at the top right right here it says it says up and we want to look at the other one and the other one says up if those are down here on the bottom and they're not up then you need to rotate this 360 degrees that's one full revolution around to get this to be up here so it says up the other thing that you're going to look at is you're going to look at there's a mark right here and there's a mark right here on the inside of the timing cover and you want to make sure that those are lined up okay and we'll look at that a little bit more as we get further into this so we're going to make sure that those all say up and that we are on top dead center here and if that doesn't say up we're going to turn the crank 360 degrees Okay, so to further demonstrate what we were talking about with rotating this crank 360 degrees or something that everybody needs to understand when you're working with one of these motors, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this line right here at 12 o'clock so that we can keep track of our rotation as we turn the motor. Um, what you may or may not realize is that every time you rotate the crankshaft 360 degrees, your camshaft turns uh, 180 degrees so it takes two rotations of the crank to turn the camshaft one full revolution um, we want to make sure that we have this up and uh, when you when we put everything back on we're gonna make sure that um, we go back in the same orientation which puts number one cylinder on the compression stroke Okay, sitting here on the right side of the motor, and I specifically wanted to show you the right side of the motor because when we loosen up this belt tensioner right here, this pulley is going to want to move around on us. Left side, not so much. At any rate, none of it's really a big deal because we've got all of our marks. We've got our up here. We've got this mark going up that we just put on there with the marker. We've got this one says up, and we know that we're on top dead center on that side, which is putting cylinder number one on the top of its compression stroke. So as long as we know where we're at, we don't really need to worry about anything. The only way you can get screwed up is to start flipping this thing around, and I don't think that anybody's going to start doing that. So we're going to loosen this up, and don't panic if this moves. You're not going to let any magic smoke out. So 
So we're gonna take a 12 millimeter socket wrench and we're gonna loosen this side up. We're gonna loosen up both of these bolts. This one is the pivot side. This is the side that has all the adjustment on it, okay? So you're gonna be able to see here, when we loosen this up, I'm gonna pull down on this and this pulley's gonna to wanna, to see it moved a little bit. And then when I take off this spring here and I'm gonna pull this belt off, it's gonna move on us even more. So to get that spring off, just grab your favorite set of needle nose pliers and get in here right on that spring. It's not very hard to move and lift and pull that off of there. And that's gonna let all the tension off of this left side. And now we can go ahead, we can loosen this. Don't, don't try to get these belts out of here. You're not gonna get out of here without screwing something up. You got a flange on here holding it on and uh, it looks like it'll come off, but trust me, it won't come off. Go ahead and just pull this off. It's just two bolts. And then this plate behind here might wanna fall off on you too. Uh, that's also not a big deal. Those just kind of set in there and then get pinned down when you put the covers back on. So don't worry about that. So then now when I loosen this up all the rest of the way here and take this bolt off, you guys should be able to see this pulley really want to kind of move on you. So you get that loose off of there. And pull that off. So when this actually comes off, see I've got, I'm just holding this right now and that's what's actually holding that, that belt pushing up on that is holding that right now. And as I loosen this, you can see that that's going to want to move on you. Okay. And that's just, that's just the spring pressure on, on these, uh, on these, uh, valve stems here being pushed on by that cam and it wants to settle out and it turns just a little bit and I'll show you how to fix that. When we actually put it, when we put the new one back on, I mean, basically what it's going to equate to is remember, we're still up. I mean, life's not over here. And uh, we got this mark right here and we got this mark right here. And if you're off by a whole tooth, a whole tooth is from here to here. Okay, one whole tooth. Look, look at the distance on that. Okay, from that mark to the same spot on that mark. If you were off on that, I'm only off two teeth now and it looks like a mile. Okay, so if you're off a tooth, you're gonna see it. But basically what we're gonna do when we put this back on, and this is pretty easy to do when it's in the bike because you can actually just zip tie your wrench right down to the frame. It's a little bit tougher here on the bench, but I'll be able to do it when I'm just holding on to this thing with one hand, is we're just gonna turn this thing back and we're gonna line that up. We're gonna line those marks back up and this will be in here and then we'll, we'll have this held it might help if, you know, like I said, if this is in your bike, which most likely it will be. Um, but uh, we'll take that roller and we'll push it up and put that bolt in there. And you can see how it doesn't really take off on you. It won't wander once that, with that bolt in there. So once you get that, you're in pretty good shape. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the same thing to the other side. We're going to get both of these belts off of here. Now I figured since I was doing it, I'd go ahead and show you this side too. So I already, I, I just took the pliers and pulled that loose and I've got this loose here. And if we go ahead and we just take that screw all the way out, then now, now this is, see this, this one doesn't move at all. It's pretty much, I mean, it's pretty much right where it needs to be. So this side, you don't have to adjust at all as long as everything is up like it's supposed to be when you start. That's, that's an important step is making sure that everything is like you want it before you start. And once you have these loose, you don't really need to take this other bolt out necessarily. Um, you can just leave them. I mean, if all you're doing is changing the belts, um, or you could just take these all the way off and then you can, these just pop out of here. Um, that's pretty obvious. And then, you know, you can clean those and stuff, but, um, yeah, that's pretty much it as far as getting these things off. And then you can just pull those off. And, um, this one was still pretty decent. I put them on there, but I was like, you know, I tore this thing all apart and uh, let's go ahead and we'll change the belts out. So I don't have my new belts yet. Um, I stopped at the parts store today and they only had one of them in. Obviously I need two. Uh, so I figured I'd get this started. So that's how you actually get the belts off. And we've got everything open up right now. I'm just gonna cover it up and we will try to get back at it tomorrow and show you guys how to top it all off, get everything all tensioned and ready to go.